Yo, what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current second year medical student. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the top five resources that I used in my first year of medical school. So let's go. Okay, so just a quick disclaimer, but many of these resources are not for everyone because everyone has their own study strategies that they use in medical school. But these personally worked for me and I think they work for a majority of medical students, which is why I wanna share them with you guys. And specifically, I wanna share how I use them during my studies so that you can get a better idea if these resources will work for you. Now, starting off with the first resource, and you can probably already guess what it is, but it's one of my favorite ones, and it's called Anki. So Anki is a software-based flashcard program that implements space repetition in order to learn vast amounts of information. Now I recommend trying out Anki for at least three to four weeks before completely giving up on it if you know it's not for you because there is kind of a slow learning curve when first using Anki. The interface might look kind of weird and you might be confused on how to make new cards and what unsuspending cards means and all this Anki lingo, but you'll definitely get used to it as you do Anki. So yeah, I definitely give it like, you know, three or four weeks before abandoning it and if you do enjoy it, definitely keep up with it because I think Anki is the best way to memorize the insane amounts of information that you have to know for medical school. Because one of the differences, for example, between university and medical school is that in university, for example, you had classes like English and history, and then you had your main courses that were part of your degree, whatever that was. Like if you were a chemistry major, you had your chemistry classes. But after taking like a writing sentence class, for example, you kind of just forgot about that class and didn't really use that information again, um, unless you had to write some papers or something. But in medical school, like everything you learn on day one is still relevant four years later. So that's why Anki is a great way to keep up with the information that you learned on day one throughout your entire preclinical journey, um, which is why I highly recommend using Anki in order to implement space repetition and active recall every single day during your medical school studies. So yeah, that's kind of how I use Anki um, during my medical school. I obviously unsuspend relevant cards during my current block, but I always keep up with my reviews, even the reviews that I did like last year, 365 days ago, I'm still doing those cards every single day. <laughs> okay, now on to the second resource that I recommend you use as a first year medical student, and that is Boards and Beyond. So Dr. Ryan, a savior to many of us medical students, created basically a video series that covers almost every single topic in medical school, like microbiology, all of the organ systems, all the pathology, cells, genetics, all of that stuff. Basically, he made a bunch of like high yield videos um, with different subtopics underneath those major organ systems. And what I like to do is before I actually watch my in-house lectures, I will kind of pre-learn the material with the relevant boards and beyond videos. And I will also unsuspend Anki cards that were related to that boards and beyond video. So the awesome thing about Anki and boards and beyond is that there's currently a pre-made deck made by the Anking. I think it's on version seven and I might post a Reddit link below for that V7 pre-made deck because uh, it's the best pre-made deck you can use in medical school in my opinion. But basically that pre-made deck is so good that they have every single video on boards and beyond tags for the cards that are associated with that video. So for example, let's say you watch a video about cardiac physiology, that exact video will have the 40 or 50 cards that are associated with it on Anki. Um, so you can unsuspend those cards and then just learn them. And it's a great way to combine boards and beyond and Anki. And once I've done that, I will then watch my in-house lecture. And I really like doing that because then I kind of, because I already learned the material or pre-learned it in some way, it's really easy for me to follow along with the lecture because um, I'm not seeing it for the first time. This is maybe the second or third time that I'm seeing the material. And I feel like I actually get a better grasp of what is happening in the in-house lectures than if I were to do it the other way around, if I were to just go in blank in the in-house lecture and then watch the Boards and Beyond video. So yeah, that's kind of how I use Boards and Beyond. I watch all the videos that are related to my current unit um, and I will unsuspend the relevant Anki cards related to that video. And then I will watch the in-house lectures that are related to that unit. So yeah, I definitely highly recommend using Boards and Beyond. It's a super awesome resource and I've heard it's the highest yield for step one studying. So it's a good way to balance, you know, what you're learning in lecture versus studying for step one. Okay, now on to resource number three, and it's one of my favorite ones in this list, 
And what it is, is it's Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. So if you don't know what Sketchy is, um, and you're just starting your first year of medical school, you might not know what it is because if you do anatomy first, for example, there's no reason to do Sketchy yet. But when Sketchy will come in hand and when it will save your life is during your microbiology units and all your pharmacology related stuff. So um, just to explain kind of what Sketchy is, basically imagine it's like a cartoon sketch that depicts certain microbiology or certain drug interactions and it does it in a really fun and unique way and it uses a lot of like memory devices and a lot of like colors and shapes and reoccurring figures so that when you see, you know, like the macrolid crow, you know that you have to use macrolids to treat the uh, pathogen or whatever is on the sketch. Um, but I highly recommend using Sketchy during your microbiology blocks for sure. It really is like one of my strongest subjects, microbiology and pharmacology because of Sketchy. Um, and the narrators, they're pretty funny. It's just a highly reviewed resource, I think, by most medical students. Um, I don't use Sketchy pathology because um, I'll explain later in this video, but I use other resources for pathology that I think are kind of better, but definitely sketchy pharmacology and sketchy microbiology. They're just excellent ways to memorize all of the bacteria, all of the viruses, and all of the different like drug mechanisms that you're going to learn throughout your medical school career. So yeah, highly recommend sketchy farm and sketchy micro for your first year of medical school. Okay, now on to resource number four, and I have another hero of medical school to announce, and his name is Dr. Sitar and he wrote the wonderful book, Pathoma. I actually have the book here, Fundamentals of Pathology, Pathoma, written by Dr. Hussein Sattar. An amazing physician and an amazing book that covers all of the high yield and major pathology that you need to know for every single organ system in medical school. And it's so high yield that our class, or our medical school even gave us this book and a subscription to Pathoma for free because they understand how much it correlates with things that we need to know for step one and for our own in-house lectures too. I mean, like for example, we're on our cardiology block and I'm assuming that almost everything that's gonna be covered in this book is gonna be covered in the in-house lectures. So I think it's super important to go over Pathoma and once again with the pre-made Onking deck, it has every single chapter in this book um, tags in the Onking deck so you can unsuspend those cards as you learn it in this book. Um, and basically what it is, is it's not really a textbook, it's more kind of like bullet points and like headings and all that stuff with often relevant pictures of like histology or gross anatomy pictures. Um, but it's super awesome to kind of go through or skim through as you're learning about pathology um, in a certain block. And I just highly recommend this resource because I mean everything on here is going to pretty much be step one covered and it'll really help you in your in-house exams too. Um, it's a kind of good way to have a solid foundation on the major pathology that you need to know for each unit. Um, and it does a good job of distinguishing between similar pathologies in a certain unit. For example, there might be similar presentations like someone could have cough, dyspnea, coryza, just all these similar symptoms and pathology does a good job of delineating those symptoms and unique features of certain diseases that um, could be high yield for step one or your in-house exams, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, highly recommend using Pathoma during your first year of medical school, at least when you get to the pathology blocks, not necessarily during anatomy. You kind of just have to get through anatomy. There's not really too many resources that can help you with that besides just going to the actual anatomy lab or the one video that I did previously, uh, anatomy lab bootcamp is a good resource. Um, but Pathoma, once you start getting into your um, system pathology blocks, that is a good time to use that resource. Okay, now before I talk about my fifth and final resource that I recommend to use in your first year, I just want to give an honorable mention to first aid. Um, the reason I'm not including first aid in this is because I have mixed feelings about first aid. I mean, I do use first aid. I always skim the chapter that I'm currently on before my in-house exam. But first aid, it's not really a textbook. It's just kind of like a bunch of figures and bullet points that go over kind of everything you need to know, but not in a really like fun way. Like it's really hard to actually read first aid. Um, it's not a really entertaining <laughs> textbook. There's no videos to go along with it. Um, it's just imagine like a list of tables and bullet points that go over like all the pathology, physiology, 
anatomy, embryology, all of that stuff within a certain organ system. Um, so it's like, it's an okay resource. I would recommend like perusing the chapters that you're currently on when you're learning those in medical school, but it, it doesn't make it, you know, on my top five on my list that I actually enjoy and that I get a lot of use out of. Um, and also the pre-made deck, the Anking deck that I mentioned, um, that deck actually does a good job of hitting all of the stuff that first aid covers anyways. So even if you don't open first aid at all, but you do the entire Anking deck, you will actually cover essentially everything that is written in first aid. So that's a benefit anyways of using the pre-made Anking deck. Okay, so now let's get into my fifth and final resource. And it's not so much of a resource as much as it is friends. <laughs> and not to get too cheesy or sentimental, but I think friends are really important to have in medical school just to like be sane and to have people to rely on and to make the whole entire experience more enjoyable. Because at the end of the day, all the people in your class are gonna be your colleagues and future physicians, and you're all learning to become great doctors. So why not, you know, help each other out in the best way possible? And kind of the best example I can give of this is when we first went into medical school, our first unit that we were learning was anatomy of like the entire human body. And there were some people who came into medical school with awesome anatomy knowledge, like they were either anatomy TAs or they had taken a lot of anatomy courses. Basically, they had an extensive background in anatomy and they kind of devoted their time to helping us or people like me who had never taken anatomy in their lives before. And they did a lot of things like they held extra office hour sessions to go over what our current anatomy block was on. They even held like mock lab practicals so they pinned structures and simulated like a anatomy lab exam before the actual exam. And I'm so grateful for all of my classmates who helped organize and set up these mock anatomy lab practicals because it certainly saved me and allowed me to pass the actual exams. Um, so, you know, friends and colleagues like these, I think are super important in medical school and just super important in life in general. Um, so, you know, don't try and go at it alone because medical school is it's kind of hard to do completely by yourself. I mean, not to say it's not impossible, but you know, having friends and colleagues there to support you in the study with, I think is, is a really important part to have in medical school. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you're in your first year right now, best of luck. I hope you found something useful in this video and in one of the resources that I mentioned. Um, feel free to leave any comments below about additional resources that I might not have mentioned in this video or if you want me to clarify something that I said during this video. But anyways, stay strong, stay healthy, and as always, Dr. Bayob.